Welcome to the Politics of Everything. I'm Amber Danes, your host and podcast producer. This is a half hour of power, a podcast dropping every week where I unpack the politics of everything, from money to motherhood, nutrition to narcissism, startups to secularism, the environment, equality, and much, much more. Our guests are seasoned in the field or topic of their choice, even if you've not heard of them yet. This is a non-partisan show. So while I love exploring varied views and get a buzz from a healthy debate of ideas, this is not a purely blue, white, green program. Please subscribe, tune in and enjoy the politics of everything. Shyness is something we rarely talk about, let alone elevate in our loud, often brash, TikTok-obsessed, all-singing-and-dancing world. Meet Melbourne-based Kaylee Chu, the founder of 100 Lunches with Strangers, a movement she founded off the back of her best-selling book of the same name, where Kaylee shared a journey from a shy immigrant to a confident TEDx speaker in just two years by getting out of her comfort zone and arranging 100 lunches with complete strangers. When COVID hit, she turned virtual and has arranged over 350 lunches with strangers, ranging from CEOs, billionaires, and even celebrities like Shane Jacobson, and now works with others to help build their confidence, grow their network, and unleash their potential. Kaylee has spoken at over 200 events, both in person and virtual, over the last three years to spread positive energy and help others grow and connect. She's also created two strong communities with over 4,000 members combined with weekly events to help people grow and connect one targeted at a personal development and the other supporting Asians in Australia. Kaylee is aged in her 30s, is happily married and is a proud mum to two boys and I'm really keen to find out more. So welcome to the Politics of Everything, Kaylee. Thank you for having me here, Amber. (laughs) Podcasting remotely can be challenging, but it doesn't have to be. Since 2017, I have relied on Zencaster's all-in-one web-based solution to make the process quick and painless, the way podcasting should be. If you know me, I'm pretty obsessed with quality guests, quality content, and quality sound, and that's what Zencaster allows me to do. Not to mention, it's really easy to use, even for my guests that aren't particularly tech savvy. There's nothing to download, they just click on the link and we start recording. Zencaster is all about making your podcasting experience easy, and with everything from local recording to automatic post production all in the one tool, you don't have to leave your browser to get each episode done. I want you to have the same great experience that I do for all my podcasts and content needs. So I have a special offer for you. If you go to zen.ai forward slash politics of everything and enter this promo code, you'll get 30% off in your first three months when you sign up to Zencaster Pro. That's Z-E-N dot A-I, politics of everything. It's now time to share your story. I mean, I'd love to know um, a little bit about your early childhood ambitions. I mean, did you know what you wanted to be when you grew up? And was there something that kind of is a bit of a theme that's sort of taken you to where you are now? Yes, I know what I want to be when I grow up. Since I was a little girl, like earliest memory, maybe five-year-old, I always want to be a good mum. <laughs> oh, that's great. And and so obviously you're a mum now. Did you go to university? Did you study? Do you have some sort of, you know, I guess, early career which we can draw upon? Yes, I went to Melbourne Uni Commerce degree and I've done financial planning for about seven years before I became a, you know, speaker, coach and author. Excellent. So shyness is defined as the tendency to feel awkward, worried or tense during social encounters, especially with unfamiliar people. And of course, we don't know each other at all, but I must be one of many people that you've met that you haven't actually met previously before doing something like this. I like to ask people about these kinds of, I guess, experiences, because I think many of us can relate to it, even if you are an extrovert like myself. Is this a superpower because I guess in some ways shyness can help you get more prepared because you don't feel as confident when you're going into a new situation or have you always viewed it as something you need to fix because, you know, in careers, in business, even on, you know, our personal lives, being seen as shy can be seen as a bit of a deficit. Do you have a couple of examples of how you view shyness? I love what you say about shyness being a superpower. I don't know if that's the case, but because I've been shy for so long, lacking confidence for so long, I do feel that I am a little bit more observant than other people. Like I can, because 
I literally, I could sit in a meeting or a dinner or like a catch up event for like three hours and not say a single word just by observing people, looking how people interact with each other. And with that, I feel like I can, you know, understand people's behavior a little bit better. So maybe. You must be a great listener. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Is it kind of, is that go with the, with the territory when you're shy? Are you listening because you're observing and you're not necessarily just wanting to speak? I think so. It, it was frustrating though, because you mentioned about extrovert. I actually believe that I'm an extrovert since I was born. It's just because of the shyness. I was a very frustrated extrovert. Like I, they're, they're like introvert people who like to be sitting in the corner, reading a book or not participating at all. And they're perfectly happy. But I wasn't, I was the one that I want to join the party. I want to join a conversation, but because of my shyness, because of my lacking confidence, I couldn't. And that is so frustrating. <laughs> Wow, that's an interesting perspective. I've never heard anyone describe it like that. I mean, I've heard people talk about people kind of being introverted but acting like an extrovert at work, but then they want to get home and they know they're an introvert because they're very happy on their own. But like you say, if you're always the observer but you are frustratingly keen to participate but are just lacking, I guess, some of those you know innate qualities to do that, that must be challenging. Do you think shyness is a cultural thing or in our DNA somehow? Like, do you think there are families? of people that are all sort of similar in a way or you're a hybrid of your parents and when I mention the cultural thing without wanting to be stereotypical you know I, I went to a boarding school in Sydney and it was very multicultural and we had a lot of students from overseas particularly from Asia in the boarding house and I did notice that there was a degree of shyness but not amongst themselves and so I think sometimes it was a, a language barrier if that makes sense you know not feeling as confident with their English skills or not knowing how to relate to us native Australians if you like so I did observe that but I do wonder if you've got a view on on how shyness is kind of manifested I think that's a combination of everything that you mentioned. Cultural definitely contributed to that because when we were little, it's very different looking at how my kids learn from school now and how I was taught when I was a little girl at school. It was just so interesting because here everyone encouraged to speak up and if you put up your hand and you share you got encouraged but for me when I was studying in you know primary school and I was in Hong Kong we treated as a good girl if we just listen like we just listen to the teacher and then just absorb as much as you can instead of you know being a two-way participating thing and like a sponge <laughs> A sponge of information to be soaked up. Yeah, we've been told, you know, as a Chinese background, we're so good at memorizing stuff and, you know, academic wise, but that is actually pretty sad because we're not taught about how to do the presentation skills or communication, etc. In particular for girls is, you know, we raised in being encouraged to be like a listener and a follower. So that definitely make a difference. And when you mention about, you know, your previous experience about the cultural thing, and absolutely, yes, from as an immigrant or international student, I think moving country, English not the first language, definitely, you know. <laughs> it's a big barrier. Yeah, I can imagine. It would be for anybody, I imagine, you know, even if, you know, it wasn't your heritage to be, you know, much more of a passive person in a conversation. I think, you know, it's such a huge thing to move countries and obviously then have to study in the language which may not be your first language yeah and then I think it's, it's just a little bit overwhelming as well like you you know everything's changed and you kind of want to just stay in your comfort zone hang out with the people from the same background and I was not racist I just want to make sure that I was not racist but I <laughs> no it doesn't come here. across like that no not at all yeah. I do understand because I think it's no different to anyone in, in in a way we're all a little bit tribal in the sense that you know people you have something in common with you'll obviously gravitate towards you know in an unfamiliar situation that's a very natural human response I think yeah it's just scary to talk to people who looks different and cultural different and everything's different and you just need to step out of a comfort zone but one of my biggest surprise since I started this hundred lunches with strangers journey is how wonderful and friendly and amazing Australians are everyone was so friendly I don't know what all those like negative comments I had in my head you know about how people judging me and stuff but no like everyone was just so friendly so tapping into that movement you've created for someone shy how did you convince yourself to meet a hundred strangers for lunch and I guess what are some of the lessons that taught you? you've just tapped into one about how people surprise you and the barrier isn't really as high as you make it out to be but like what made you what was the tipping point that made you go I've got to go do this and it's really going to help me um, I got a new job 
and I really want to impress my boss. I was so well prepared for a meeting, but during the meeting, I could not say a single word, and I was so frustrated. Like, I knew I could do this, but because of my shyness, because of my lacking confidence, and I really disappointed myself. And that was the day that really changed my life because after that, I had a chat with my boss and we decided we we had to do something, like something's got to change because I can't live in the country for 12 years and still not able to communicate with strangers. And because I was so determined that day, I sent out 30 lunch invitations and three people said yes. And that's how I started my lunch journey. <laughs> So when you say you sent out invitations, did you text? Did you email? Like what were the mechanics and how did you choose these people? Good question. I thought I would go for LinkedIn because that's like a platform a little bit safer and you can kind of stalk them professionally before you send up the lunch invitation. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's a great idea. And were you proposing, did you tell them why you wanted to meet, I guess? Because the thing is with any sort of, you know, stranger kind of approaching you, even if it's through LinkedIn, which obviously is a professional platform, it is a little bit strange. You know, people might be thinking, oh my gosh, does she want to date me? What, what's what's this all about? I think it, my my email was pretty straightforward. I just go, hi, Amber, I saw you've done this podcast. I really admire you or I like what you're doing, etc. a little bit about them. And I go, this is my new year resolution that I want to have lunch with 100 strangers. And this is a little bit of information about me. I'm married. I've got two kids. I'm happy. And this is my work. And, and would you like to be part of my journey? And people pretty receptive about that. <laughs> Amazing. And when you went to the first lunch, I'm thinking the first one, like anything, the first of anything is always the hardest. How was that? Did you have to kind of come up with some conversation points? How did you prepare yourself for that particular lunch? Because <laughs> it could have been a coffee, right? A coffee, sure. It's 15 minutes if it doesn't go well, half an hour if it goes well. A lunch is a little bit longer. So how did you actually prepare yourself for those actual engagements? The first lunch was definitely longer and even longer than usual. I think that was an hour and a half and that was not because we had a lot to talk about because I I couldn't talk much. I gave him mainly one word reply, which I felt sorry for him. I had a much longer (laughs) lunch because I was having a keto diet at that time, like no low carbs. And the only thing that I could eat was chicken wings. And I was having my table manners and have the chicken wings with knife and a fork. So it took me longer to (laughs) That's amazing. Um, It was really awkward. But like I mentioned, I got three yeses before, you know, when when I was so determined to change. And I'm so glad that I did because otherwise I probably have given up. What's the hit rate? So if you have to have lunch with 100 strangers, do you have to send out 500 invitations? I mean, do you remember sort of the the kind of the metrics around getting that 100? When I first started, I think it was about 10% people said yes because people think I'm weird or it's just hard to <laughs> arrange. Or, uh, I've got or people you, could involved, me. Or you could not be a real person, a deep fake or something like that, you know, in the online world. They're like, uh, no, I think he, she, she wants to sell me something. She must be uh, like a network marketer or something. But that's the feedback that I've been told after the whole journey when they explain to me why they decide to ignore me at first and then come back to me two years later. <laughs> um, but then as I start to share more on my social media, I talk to people about, hey, this is my journey. These are the photos. These are my learnings. And then from there, I start to get a higher and higher and higher accept, accept rate, whatever you like to call it. But yeah. <laughs> So what has the experience of this and obviously the virtual option you've done, you've you know, basically met almost 500 people now through online or in person. What has it really taught you about shyness and in your own personal, I guess, lessons about this? I think doesn't matter if you're an introvert or extrovert. I think a good communication skills or social skills, um, being confident within yourself is just crucial for for having a happy life. I feel like I'm so much happier now that I can just be myself instead of always thinking about what people think of me. And instead of trying to fit in, I feel like I can just, yeah, just be me. (laughs) Excellent. Many people, including extroverts, would feel shy at some stage. I don't think anyone's, you know, on top of their game and feeling like they want to talk to everybody every day. Nerves are natural when we face new people or unusual situations. I'm thinking like the TEDx talk that you, you've you mentioned you've done. How has your experiment helped you? And do you think you're no longer shy or are you just a high functioning shy person? <laughs> high functioning shy person. I love that term. I mean, like you mentioned, everyone's got some, you know, shyness at some stage or feeling confident on 
at another time. So I feel like I used to be shy all the time or lacking confidence all the time. And now I feel much better that majority of the time I feel, I feel very comfortable with myself. So yeah. That's excellent. So it sounds like it's been a great experience for you. Changing tack a little bit, I asked people a couple of quite consistent questions. I'd love to know who have been your most important career or life mentors and why? And perhaps it's someone you met at lunch. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> yes, I do have a lot of people that I'm very, very grateful for. And one of the guys that I, I appreciate a lot, his name is Michael Russell. And it's really interesting how I met him. Yes, I had lunch with him, but how I got to have lunch with him was because one of my lunch guests, he, he didn't even tell me that he, he used to work in a publishing house. He just told me he works in marketing. And because of him, after my lunch experience, he encouraged me to publish a book. And that's how I got the book. That wasn't even planned. And then after that, he shared my story on his social media. And one of his friends looked at it and said, hey, Kaylee, can you come to my office and share your story with a few of my mentees? Because I think you, you know, you've got an interesting story. And that was my very first sharing or public speaking experience and I was expecting 10 people in the office but end up we had like 35 people waiting for me in the room and Michael was, Russell was sitting at the back of the room listening the whole time and and that's how we started talking after so one thing led to another led to another but it's always lunches that connect us together and yeah really really life-changing experience. <laughs> I bet and did that inspire you then to want to go and do more public speaking because obviously it's not the natural place where, a, you know, a shy person would want to push themselves into. I think after the lunch with strangers experience, it really changed my perspective in life about saying yes instead of saying no and go, yeah, why not? I'll just give it a shot. So after that experience, Michael actually gave me my very first corporate speaking gig and he bought a hundred copies of my book to give to his staff, which I'm very grateful for. And after that, he's like, wow, I, I really like your speech. It's a very refreshing because it's a true story. And I literally just got on the stage and shared my story and got like, you know, Q&A sessions, etc. But he thought, he, he thought that was interesting. And because he's the CEO of the company, he literally just called his other CEO friends and say, hey, you need to use Kaylee for your, for your speeches as your next keynote speaker. And then they're like, I have never heard of Kaylee Chu before, but since you recommend her, we'll use her. And that's how I started my keynote speaking journey. <laughs> It's amazing. So if we spoke again in a year's time, what would be your number one goal to have achieved and why? Surely not another 450 lunches, but maybe it is. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Um, a lot of people ask me that question and go, oh, are you aiming for like 500 lunches, 1,000 lunches? But you know what? It doesn't matter at all, that number to me, because I feel like I already transformed. I feel like I overcame my shyness and I really enjoy my life now. My next journey is really to encourage other people to do the same because I believe that doesn't matter who you are, where you're at, what you want to achieve. If anyone willing to take the leap of faith and have 100 lunches with 100 strangers, their life will be different and they will be at a place that they couldn't even imagine before. The learnings from strangers, the new connections, the opportunities that come because of the journey is just incredible. What would be your final takeaway message for us on the politics of shyness? You've given us so much, I guess, insight into your own experience. But if there's anyone listening today that's like, that's great for you, Kaylee, but I don't think I could do that. What would you want to say to them? Of course, everybody can. In fact, there are a lot of people started doing this journey as well, and they all have very, very similar results. I remember when I was jumping out of the plane a couple of years ago doing the skydiving thing, I was screaming all the way in the plane. That's pretty normal. For other people. <laughs> I screamed before I jumped. I was screaming the whole time, wondering why, how, why would I put myself in that situation? When I got on the ground, it was such amazing experience and I did that happy dance. I couldn't control it. I was so happy. That's what I want to share with the audience. You know, sometimes there are things that's out of our comfort zone. We know that's a little bit scary, but don't focus on the scary part. Don't focus on the plane going up the sky and open um, the door and force a jump out of the plane, but the happy dance when we got to the ground and it's just so worth it and never let your comfort zone limit your potential. We can all achieve a lot more than what we expect and we can change our destiny. I love it. Such wise words. And obviously you've had such an amazing experience creating this movement and obviously sharing it with others. If you do want to connect with uh, Kaylee Chu and book her for some keynote speaking or buy a book, there will be some details on the show notes. It's been a great pleasure to have you today and welcome back anytime to tell us about how you're going and maybe what you've achieved next in the future. Thank you so much, Kaylee. Love to. Thank you so much, Amber. Thanks for the opportunity to share. Take care. Thanks so much for listening today. 
If you've enjoyed the politics of everything, I thrive on your feedback. So please add a short review and share the podcast with your network through Apple, Spotify, and all the usual suspects. I'm always on the hunt for new and diverse guests. So if you or someone you know has a fresh idea you're busting to get out there, please email me at amber at amberdanes.com and my crew will get back to you very soon.